Hello, my name is Charles Camarda, and I'm the founder and CEO of the Epic Education Foundation. And this is lesson two of Innovative Conceptual Engineering Design, or the ICE methodology. Uh, I will be speaking about in this lesson about some of the major themes that we will be introducing uh, and highlighting throughout the course as student teams approach solving an EPIC challenge, an EPIC design challenge. The Innovative Conceptual Engineering Design Methodology has several themes which you will hear us discuss throughout this course which will arise in each of the key phases of product development. We will now discuss seven of those major themes. As you can see, this is the outline of, of the seven major themes which we will be discussing today and going into in, in detail on, on each one of them. First one is the human mind, use it. Arrogance is the enemy of creativity. Understanding the mechanisms of failure. Failure is not an option. Panning and zooming out during the design process. And allowing, to, allowing time for ideas to incubate and also discussing creativity and the fact that we are all creative and being creative not only individually but also as a team. And lastly, we will summarize our results. Okay, so starting this, um, the learning objectives, At the end of this lesson, the student will be able to understand the seven major themes of the ICE methodology and guiding principles which will constitute the focus of this methodology in the EPIC Challenge program. Critical thinking and being able to question and discuss ideas candidly is very important. Teamwork, team learning, and collective intelligence. How does a team operate? How do they collect knowledge and share that knowledge? The importance of failure and creating an environment which is open for dissenting opinions. Communication, you're going to learn and. Uh, and practice new methods of communication, collecting information, curating that information, and sharing it with team members. Creativity, individual and collective. You'll be learning several methods for enhancing both your individual creativity as well as the creativity of the team. Panning out and zooming in is described, it describes the engineering design process, in particular systems engineering and design thinking. Okay, so let's jump into it right now. The first um, um, theme is the human mind use it. And the human mind tools like numerical analysis enhance the efficiency of humans but cannot replace judgment, critical thinking, and the creativity of the human mind. This theme speaks to the habit of young, inexperienced engineers who may tend to dive into numerical analysis of a problem with, without first understanding the fundamental physics. Very simple analytical, analytical models should be tried first to establish this preliminary understanding of the problem and to assess the important or key parameters to ensure the physical understanding and simple model and observed behavior all agree. The mind's ability to functionally decompose the problem and use experience and judgment to correctly formulate a solution strategy, together with realistic assumptions and boundary conditions, is crucial and will serve to better understand more rigorous and complex representations and to determine where and if errors occur. And lastly, the human mind is un is unsurpassed in its ability to assimilate data, recognize patterns, create, and to innovate. The objective of this course is to show you how to be as creative as possible and how to use tools available to you to help you create, design, analyze, and optimize the problems as effectively as possible. Our next theme is arrogance is the enemy of creativity. I believe one of the most, this is one of the most serious impediments to creativity and should be recognized and avoided by an innovative, high-performing team at all costs. We should strive to be highly competent and, and should avoid crossing that line and becoming arrogance. Once we cross that line, arrogance distorts our perception and it prevents individuals and teams from seeing other views. 
Entire organizations can develop a not invented here culture where they limit solutions to ideas from their team because they believe that they and only they are the experts and truly understand the problem. A type of arrogance can develop by not being open to looking outside your normal work boundaries. Whether an institution's not invented here blinders, discipline, snobbery, or even national or cultural prejudices. You may also want to note that many ideas can be obtained by looking at solutions in other applications or even other disciplines. It can prevent us from doing an extensive background search. Arrogance can limit or prevent objective criticism and review of one's own ideas and those of the team. This is directly related to the next theme, understanding the mechanisms of failure. It can drastically stifle and, and impede communication and learning. Arrogance is not limited to individuals. Entire organizations can become arrogant and even take pride in their arrogance. The Mission Operations Directorate, MOD, at Johnson Space Flight Center is one example. Hence, it is important for all members of a team to constantly monitor the health of their team and be on the lookout for arrogant behaviors. In particular, we should constantly monitor whether or not our team is, is psychologically safe and creates an environment which is psychologically safe, where other members of the team feel free to stand up and criticize and offer dissenting opinions. That leads us to our next theme, which is understanding mechanisms of failure. And I want to spend a lot of time on this area because it's very important and we're going to dedicate another lesson entirely to the idea of failure. My mentor, Dr. James Starnes, always stressed the importance of understanding failure mechanisms or root causes of failure. Another great engineering faculty member at Duke University, Professor Henry Petrosky, has written several books on failure and engineering design, and he defines good design as one that obviates failure by adequately addressing all potential failure mechanisms early in the design process. If you understand and can visualize potential failure mechanisms early, there is often enough time in the design cycle, it will open up avenues of new ideas to simply and elegantly address and eliminate these modes of failure from ever occurring. Studying the history of past failures of similar or analogous systems provides a starting point for this critical analysis. This is especially important when we are evaluating our own idea, when we have some creative ownership. When we have some creative ownership, this is we view our ideas as our child and we get be, become defensive when people tend to criticize our idea. And we look for the smallest possible imperfections and potential failure mechanisms. We should shop our, our idea around to as many subject matter experts as possible and listen attentively for their critiques and what they think could be potential problems. We should also look for other domains and uses of analogous technology. And once you identify all potential failure mechanisms, you need to think of all the potential ways that you could think of to, to obviate these failures in the design, possibly making your design more res robust or resilient to potential failures. One of the other things you could do is build in redundancies or a fail-safe system so that if it does fail, according to your predictions, it will fail in a safe or operational mode. Later on, we, be, we will be discussing the right way to fail in an entirely uh, separate section on failure where we teach you how to, to, to fail what we call to use intelligent fast failure, failing smart fail, small cheap, early and, and, and often, and to also by failing and learning from failure to close those knowledge gaps in your ideas so that before we absolutely decide on one particular idea, we're ensured that 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 uh, idea or that concept has a high probability of success to be successfully developed.
The next theme is failure is not an option, it's a requirement. Although failure is not an option was the quote of uh, Apollo 13, it was incorrectly attributed to Gene Kranz. Although this, fa uh, this, uh, this phrase was popularized in Apollo 13, Gene Kranz never really uttered these, these words. While never spoken, this philosophy was, however, deeply ingrained in the culture of the Mission Operations Directorate, as described earlier at the Johnson Space Flight Center. Gene Kranz was instrumental in developing Mission Operations Directorate. Well, this philosophy and mantra might suit an operational vehicle which supports human life, it can have disastrous consequences when applied to the operation and or development of an experimental or research vehicle, like the space shuttle. In fact, two space shuttle tragedies resulted in part from organizational behaviors which relied on this can-do attitude and a professed belief that the space shuttle was an operational vehicle. And so we absolutely need to learn how to fail in order to learn and succeed from these failures. Discovery and innovation go hand in hand with failure and failure to permit failures impedes exploration, discovery, and innovation. Team leaders and program managers must ensure that they create an environment which is psychologically safe, a culture which tolerates, heck, even encourages failure. Not all failures are created equal, and so you'll be learning about a spectrum of failures from praiseworthy to blameworthy, as um, described by Amy Edmondson of the Harvard Business School. And the trick here is to learn how to fail. And so we will teach students how to fail smart, fast, small, cheap, early and often and use intelligent fast failure principles to make every test count and to learn as much as possible, as quickly as possible, from each experiment. Discovery and innovation go hand in hand with failure and failure to permit failure impedes exploration, discovery, and innovation. We learn so much more from our failures and in fact success may actually inc increase the chances for failure. J Dr. James Starnes, my, one of my mentors at Langley, stressed the importance of understanding all failure modes, testing the failure to corroborate those failure modes, and validating our analytical methods for predicting those failures. An environment must be psychologically safe in order to allow scientists and engineers to experiment, tinker, fail, and learn. Dr. Jack Matson calls this intelligent fast failure. Through this process, we rapidly learn new knowledge and are constantly striving to reduce key knowledge gaps prior to down selecting a final design. Our next theme is panning out and zooming in. Most problems are what we call multidisciplinary problems. They require an understanding of many disciplines sometimes many disciplines, domains, or knowledge to understand and actually predict behaviors and performance. They require multiple systems and subsystems which are linked together, either physically or functionally, and be, can be very highly coupled, meaning that seemingly minor changes in one subsystem could have serious or critical effects in another subsystem. Most of these systems we will be studying can be classified as complex as opposed to complicated. This means that we cannot predict outcomes in a deterministic way. We must use other techniques to, to verify when anomalies occur. When they do occur, how do we identify that they are anomalies and how do we solve those problems? You will learn ways to build in robustness and resilience into your designs and in a later lesson of the ICE methodology. We will be using systems engineering principles to functionally decompose and integrate these pieces of these complex problems together, and we will have a system of systems, basically, to analyze. These are very complex systems, and so we will use our digital platform throughout this course to basically create those networks or communities of practice of subject matter experts and key people to help us identify weak technical and behavioral signals of potential impending failures. 
During the course of the design cycle, teams will have to pan out and zoom in in order to view the problem in its entirety and at the same time be able to zoom in and rigorously look at critical details to understand key local as well as global failure modes. This ensures that a true systems approach is always taken. When working on one detail or component of the whole system, the designer has to step back and assess how this particular design change affects the entire system. This is crucial that a good systems engineer can rec recognize when a highly rigorous detailed analysis and experimentation is necessary to ensure true representation of a complex system behavior. When pondering, our next theme is allowing ideas times to incubate. Because when we ponder the problem, it is often necessary to allow time for ideas to incubate, gel, morph, and allow nonlinear patterns within our mind to cross-pollinate. Teams will, will, will be giving idea journals to jot down and sketch their ideas or thoughts so that the team can basically recognize other ideas and develop other ideas from those ideas. Recognizing when your team needs to take a time out, or what I call a cognitive road trip, when the team needs, needs to take a break uh, and maybe uh, uh, take a social break, go out there and explore, and always uh, in nature, uh, for instance, while at the same time always keep them keeping the problem in the front of the back of your mind, okay? So that as you're looking and relaxing and exploring in nature or studying other, other ideas, solutions to your problem will pop up, will basically work in your subconscious and basically pop up. We will be teaching you many techniques for exploring different ideas throughout this course and this is where we step into our next uh, final theme which is creativity and, and I truly believe we are all creative and everyone has the ability individually to enhance their creative potential. In addition, the creative quotient of an entire team can be enhanced and so good groups and teams can be, become great groups. And, and so how do we work effectively and synergistically within a team to increase our collective creativity quotient? And so there are very uh, different techniques that we will be using throughout this course to expand and enhance our creativity. We will use techniques like the theory of inventive problem solving, such as trees, biologically inspired design, functional decomposition, etc. And what I would do is I will employ you to use what I call a mixed martial arts approach. We will give you the tools for you to use and you hone these tools and the ability to use these cool tools. And depending on the problem and your ability, basically learn and use those tools, what works best for you, for your particular style and the environment and the team situation. We will explore not only individual creativity, but also ways for you to work together and enhance the creativity of your team. And in summary, these are the, the seven themes as we've gone over them. And I, I will try to summarize, the human mind use it. Uh, we want you to think creatively. We want you to think, um, we want you to think critically. We want you to be humble. We don't want you to be arrogant. We want you to recognize when you spot these behaviors in other team members. Understanding the mechanisms of failure and the importance of testing the failure in the laboratory and in identifying potential failure mechanisms and issues with our own ideas and concepts is very important. Failure is not an option, it's a requirement. We stress the importance of failure teaching students how to fail and learn from failures, panning out and zooming in. We are talking and we, are, we taught you a little bit and explained how we will teach you how to look at the problem, multidisciplinary problems using a systems engineering approach and how important it is as you're working on one local part of the problem to step back and see how it affects the big picture. Allowing ideas time to incubate and the fact that everyone is creative and we will develop these tools in, in further lessons throughout this course. I want to thank you. Uh, this concludes lesson two. 
and of the ICE methodology. Thank you very much.